Welcome everybody to week 11, day three. Today we're gonna to be learning how to make Photoshop filters or image filters more broadly speaking, not technically for Photoshop. But if you've ever seen an image filter like an Instagram or something like that, that's the kind of thing we're gonna be making today. It's a lot of fun. And uh, what makes it a, a really neat homework uh, assignment is that if you screw up, if you like mix up your rows and your columns, like you'll actually physically see it when you um, go to look at your image. You're like, oh shoot, I did the thing horizontally instead of vertically. And, and you get visual feedback, which is really nice. So before you come over to the image processing thing, there's a couple things I need to explain. First, uh, the most important thing is how do you build the project? So the first time you do it, um, you're probably going to need to type make, and this will take a while. So uh, about a year ago, I refactored the, um, the code so that it doesn't take 20 seconds here. Let me cancel this actually. Um, let me time. Let me time the build, okay? And find out how long it actually does take to compile this thing, because it is not fast. It takes a while. The code that will um, open and save the JPEG files is a uh, header file called cimage. Not cimage, v, cimage. And this one here. And it is a giant header file. And so it takes a really long time to compile. It's still going. Okay. And I and main is about this big. It's a small main. It's just taking that long to compile. So you can get C image if you like want to install this at home. You go to the C image library here and download the standard package. And it's just a, a zip file. And you just download it. And then you got the header file. The whole thing is held in a header file. And the thing knows how to open up. And there we go, finished. So it took 30 seconds to build. And so imagine that you you screw up, you know, and you and you you have an off by one error or something, and then you change it, and then it takes another 30 seconds for it to compile, and you're just like, ah. So, uh, so what I did was I moved all of the code where you're going to be working on stuff into these other files. So partner one is going to be working in a file called filter1.cc. Partner two is going to be in filter2.cc. Partner three is going to be in filter3.cc. If there is one, if not, just leave it blank. And then let's say that I come into like filter one.cc and uh, I want to write some code that will like, uh, um, let's say I want to double the red value at every point. So uh, at every point, the, um, the red value is going to be doubled and then the green value is left alone and the blue value is left alone. Technically, I can just comment that out or whatever, but it doesn't matter. So I've got myself an image filter now. So my image filter says for every row, for every column, there's also a third axis, which is the color axis. So uh, an image is made out of pixels. Pixels are like a little tiny little squares and things like that. Um, not the Google phone, like uh, not the movie really. Okay, it's like this, okay. So if you zoom in on an image, it's made up of these pixels. And so for every row, for every column, there is a color there. And the color is actually three values. It is red, green, and blue. Red goes from zero to 255. Green goes from zero to 255. Blue goes from zero to 255. So if you have a pixel that is 255, 255, 255, it's white. Full red, full green, full blue is white. If they're zero, 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 they're black. If it's 255, full red, zero, zero, it looks red. If it's zero, uh, that's not my middle finger. That's my ring finger. Uh, if it's zero two five five zero, it's full green. If it's zero zero two five five, it's full blue. So, uh, what my code does, all the code that I've written, it works. It opens up the whatever file you pass in. It opens it up. It converts it into a three dimensional vector, a vector, vector, vectors, row, column, and color depth. Color red, green, blue, going downwards, and then you can. Leave it alone. If you leave it alone, absolutely nothing happens in your Photoshop filter, but you can modify it. So here we're saying at row I, at row you know zero to the bottom, uh, at J left to right, the red value is going to get doubled. So we're doubling the amount of red in this image. And um, so to compile it, I type make. Don't type compile. Don't type G++. Type make. Make is how like all professional you know, systems work. They use make or they use some variant thereof. Um, uh, CMake, Ninja, there's all sorts of build systems out there, but we'll just call them all make. 
you type make, and then it figures out what needs to be compiled. Look, look at how fast that was. I didn't even have time to drink my coffee, right? So, and then if I were to type make again, it's like there's nothing to be done. You've already built everything. I didn't touch main, did I? Because I didn't touch main, it didn't need to recompile main, and recompiling main takes forever because it is using the C image header file, which is gargantuan. It re-implements huge chunks of like the standard library. Like it is not a petite little header file. It adds 30 seconds to your build time. So um, the good news is you only have to probably build it once. And then after that, um, you'll never need to touch it again. Okay, so that is make, a, okay, so how do you run it? Okay, so you're gonna run your, your program. If you run it by itself, it'll say, hey, you need to run it with a file name given. And so this is something called a command line parameter. And this is probably the first time a lot of you have seen command line parameters. So when you have main, main, we're used to main being empty, just main open close parentheses. But here we've got main taking in two parameters. One is the argument count, and one of them is the argument vector. It's a, it's not a vector like we're used to, it's, um, or the argument values, whatever the V stands for. I don't know, it's argv and argc, it's standard. So um, argc is how many words there are on the command line. So if you were to, for example, say uh, vim main.cc, foo.cc, there are three words that you ran it with. The first word is vim, the second word is main.cc, and the third word is foo.cc. So if you type that, uh, vim would get three as its argument count, because there's vim, main.cc, foo.cc, and then it's gonna get an array of strings. And the array of strings, the first, the first string is vim, the second string is main.cc, the third string is foo.cc. And so when we run our code, if you just type a.out, .out, that has an argument count of one. And so it will not run because you need to give it an image for it to run the Photoshop filter on. So um, that's how we do that. And it, this, little func this little function here called usage will remind you how you have to run the program. So when you try running it by itself, it just says, hey, you need to, you need to run it like this. And in fact, you can actually copy and paste that code there. Uh, so you don't have to type out the whole thing. And so in the public directory, I've got just a uh, simple um, shot of, um, I think it's the Gion district in uh, Kyoto. And then we're done. And so the file that it saves is called filter1.jpg. This is the name of the file that is saved. So this is the input file here. Kyoto.jpg and the file that it saves is called filter1.jpg. Then also filter2.jpg uh, also gets saved, but um, we'll, we'll look at that in a second. So how do you actually view these things? Well, I use WinSCP. Now you can use a Sadie. Uh, I think I showed that last time. You can use a Sadie, public, uh, you know, Kyoto. You get a low res, you know, picture of this shot from the Yon district, and then you could a Sadie. Um, filter1.jpg, and you can see it's been a lot more reddish sized, right? So if you remember our code, our code right here is doubling the amount of red. So you can see that, you know, even just like with a low res blurry shot, like, okay, it worked, it made the thing more red. But that's not how I recommend doing it. I mean, you can, but it's not how I recommend it. So what you want to do is fire up WinSCP. And uh, when SCP, bring it over here. Um, when SCP, you browse over to the folder in which your code is. Don't work. Image processing. And then you can right click on the image and choose open. If you do that, then it will show you what the modified version of the Kyoto image looks like, which actually looks not bad. Like it's actually not a terrible look for the thing, um, all things considered. Uh, the original is up uh, public. And we can right click and choose open on that. And so there's the original. And uh, did I close the, the modified? I guess I did. Right, so just go back. And right click and hit open. So there is the filtered version, there's the original version, right? 
So you can, I can just mouse back and forth between the two of them. And you can see that the filter is doing its job. Pretty cool, right? Very cool, gamers. So uh, you can win SCP your own images to it. Yes. And that's actually something that you're going to need to decide on with your partner. Um, you're going to need to find a good image. And we're going to have guest judges. It's due next Wednesday. We're going to have guest judges, including the TAs, uh, the tutors, and then my daughter is always one of the judges. And uh, students always try to, like, pander to her by, like, having, like, images of, like, My Little Ponies and things like that. And then she goes, you know, so. But at the same time, anything that's, like, too grotesque or too ugly, she'll thumbs it down. You guys are going to be graded on two criteria. The two criteria you're going to be graded on is artistic merit and technical merit. So artistic merit is um, how good, how aesthetically pleasing your image is. And we're actually fairly, um, we're actually fairly like, I don't want to say mean, but like we're not, uh, you don't get a 10 on that most of the time. <laughs> Let's put it that way. So like if, if I look at him and go, oh damn, you know, then you get a 10 or you get an 11. I give out an extra credit on this. And that's 10 points in and of itself just for artistic merit. Um, the majority of students get C's and B's. Uh, some of them, if it's really horrible, D's or F's on artistic merit. And uh, that's not good because this is a 20-point assignment. So make sure you actually try to make something that looks aesthetically good. I'm going to show you guys some stuff from last year. And uh, and then you can see um, kind of like what, what I'm getting at for... Um, uh, A's and B's and things like that. So, uh, what you're going to upload your, what I'm not, I'm probably not going to look at your source code. I am going to grade. I do look at your source code if I'm curious how you implemented something. So there's 10 points for artistic. There's 10 points for technical difficulty. And usually I can tell just by looking at it, how technically difficult something was. If I'm unsure, then I look at your source code. Okay. Um, so make sure your source code is available if I, if I want to look at it. Okay. So here, so what you're going to upload is the original image, the original image with the first filter applied, and then the original image with the first filter applied and the second filter applied to the first filter. Okay. So here's the original, here's the thing with the first filter. So they added a vignette effect, the vignette effect. I have sample source code for in filter two. Uh, you don't get any points for implementing a filter that I give to you. So, um, as far as technical goes, the vignette effect is worth nothing here, um, but that's a cool look. Um, changing it to add like purple, um, I like it. I, I think this is aesthetically pleasing. Uh, they added a, you have to have like a watermark and a secret message uh, somewhere in the thing. Uh, they did that. The second filter adds a couple stripes, like racing stripes to it, which are kind of like, eh, okay. And they make the thing like a really gaudy blue. So this definitely goes down on artistic. Um, this is probably like a B level thing. Somewhere on there. They start off good with that. But the second one kind of ruined the colors. You know what I mean? Like that's just not nice to look at. Uh, here we have some like ninja samurai. And then they change the colors on it. Uh, which is not bad. They added a little... Little tic tac toe board and little thing here, um, but the second one, I mean, it's not bad. I guess it's not bad. It's also probably like B level work, I would say, something like that. And then they sepia tone it, which is worth nothing because again, I give you code to sepia tone it. So they took uh, they two of the partners did their job. The third partner did nothing and contributed nothing to the grade and lowered the overall project score. Uh, they did a vignette and a sepia, both of which are code I give you. So it doesn't count for anything. Uh, we got a little birdhouse. And then they rotated it and sepia it. So uh, this would be an example of where I would actually look at their code and be like, did they write code to rotate it? Or did they just like right click on the image and like choose rotate? You know what I mean? So um, that's a place where, because, you know, figuring out rotation is not, Hard, but it's not also not easy. The sepia is worth nothing, but the um, dark. Oh yeah, deep fried. Uh, I, I thank you for mentioning that. Deep fried is negative points. So um, 
deep fried images are actually um, worth negative negative points. Okay, uh, deep fried me, deep fried me, me. Uh, and so anything that looks like garbage like this um, is just F level. Okay, no abstract art, no deep fried, no overflows. Um, I, I want the thing to be like nice looking. Okay, no deep fried pepper, no Nyquil chicken. Yeah. So uh, thank you for asking. Uh, yeah, that's uh, real bombunism has never been tried. One hundred, you know. Yeah, yeah. This this is like F level artistic. Yep. And so the second partner here added a vignette. So again, nothing. So who knows? Uh, this one I like. So this is actually a wallpaper engine background that I, I actually like. It's one of my favorite ones. And um, they added the Four Seasons to it. Not hard technically. Not hard technically. But very pleasing aesthetically. Right? So you got your spring, summer, autumn, and winter. Very simple thing. They're just adjusting the colors based on the column that they're in. Um, so adding a little bit of pink. You know, if the... If the column is between, if the column is between zero and two hundred, make it pink. If it's between two hundred and four hundred, make make it greenish. If it's between four hundred and six hundred, sepia tone it and add yellow. So not hard technically, but nice effect. And then the second, uh, the second function, uh, the second uh, filter is kind of doing the same thing, and so. Eh, um, they got a nice little watermark. They got the secret message. Overall, pretty good. Okay, so here's a dog. And then, um, it's just a dog. And then here's their filter. They made it blood red. So they just removed, they just set the green and the blue values to zero. And so, you know, that's pretty low on our, um, technical. Artistically, I'm kind of laughing a little bit at it because it's making the dog look sort of like a monster. Um, but... Yeah, that's pretty that's pretty much on the low end. And then they vignetted it. Again, a vignette isn't worth anything. They they did add one of the things, but not the other. So not not super great grade wise. Um baby. And then four babies. So that that I liked. Um I really liked that that approach to it. And then they tinted the different babies different colors. It's kinda like um uh, what was the name of that artist? Uh, the guy that did the Campbell Soup stuff, whatever his name is. Uh, it kind of reminds me of some of his work. And then they added a rectangle on top of it where I think they're just deleting out the blue. Uh, yeah, I think they just subtract the blue out. So purple turns into red. Field turns into green. Yeah. So the second filter, pretty low. Pretty low difficulty. Artistically, it's not bad. Uh, and then the third one, they just added a frowny face on top of it. So uh, a couple more. We have End of Evangelion, uh, Mario Brothers style, and then uh, artistically, it's not great. Um, difficulty wise, you know, they had to figure out like those lines and like put, where to put the orange bar, and it's not, you know, it's not, it's not bad from a technical standpoint, right? Um, and then the second one, they, uh, did like an invert and a red filter, I think. So not, not bad. Not bad. A couple more. Oh yeah. Um, it's like an eighties Miami thing. And then they actually made it look better. All right. So. That actually is quite nice. And then they change the colors again. So I, I really like this one. I think this one probably would have gotten extra credit, something like that. We do get extra credit out if, I, if we like it. We're like, ooh, we like that. So very cool stuff there. Um, this one is beautiful, but not technically difficult. So you go from this to that. Very dramatic, very beautiful image all they did though was delete out like the red and the green pretty much you know 
So um, I love I love the artistry of it. Technical low, low, dif low difficulty on the on the technical. And then this filter, eh. yeah, it kind of ruins it. I think uh, it goes from like that dramatic blue to like yellow, and then they like darken this area here. So like it's been clearly said in the previous class, it kind of ruins the rule of thirds. You know, you can't really see the guy's face anymore, and this part's highlighted, which is probably not the part that should be highlighted. So, and then the third person added a hashtag to it. Good job. Uh, this is Pripyat. So this one's actually high technical. So this one was low technical, high artist. This one is high technical, low artist, low artist score. So look at what they did here. So this is Pripyat. This is the city where Chernobyl is in Ukraine. And so that is the uh, place where the, uh, you know, the nuclear reactor melted down over there. And so they, I think maybe by hand, figured out where the skyline needed to be. And they created a starry, a starry sky behind it instead. It's pretty cool. It doesn't look great, but like, it's pretty cool. They did that. Like that's good. It's good technical prowess. You can see there's a couple places like here where their filter like kind of screwed up and they probably should have cleaned that up a little bit. Um, and then the trees are all like this radioactive blue, purple. This is like getting to like deep fried territory. So art artistically, not great, but uh, technical dig. I dig it a lot. And then you just added hashtag glow and a thumbs up to it. So that's not really a second filter worth anything. Here's the sword in the stone. Sword in the stone with a rainbow sword and a vignette. Vignette, again, not worth anything, but the rainbow sword, probably pretty cool difficulty on that one. Artistically, it doesn't look great, but it's a good technical. And then they added purple. So I, I guess they added blue to the thing. That's what it looks like. I think they just added blue overall. Good. Okay, this is one of my favorite ones. We'll stop. We'll stop with this one. So this is like the Grand Tetons, maybe. I don't know where it is. Um, and so beautiful sunset shot. And then they modify it by messing with the levels and the colors and things like that on it. And it just looks like this, this part of the water just looks fantastically beautiful. I love it. And then uh, they uh, brighten it. I don't, I don't really like the second one as much. Second filter as much, but the first, yeah, that first filter is just really cool. So sunset, different colors, different colors, pretty easy to write. Dragon Ball with different hair colors, okay. And a sepia tone, sepia tone's not worth anything. Uh, Cabin in the Woods, and that, I think this might have been the winner. I'm not sure though. Um, and so that is just beautiful. That's really gorgeous. That's a nice, that's what I'm looking for for like artistic, you know. And then they changed it to like blue, which I don't like as much. It also screwed up all the stuff up here as well. And then they posterized it. So that's, that's kind of a cool, that's like a 1970s retro look, which I dig as well. Uh, monkey flip. Monkey flip with just an image negative and a sepia. Nah. No face. Um, so they darken the outer, the outer part and they added red to it. And then they watermark, they put a watermark like this on top of these guys here. It's pretty cool. So this is Rohan's older brother who did this. It's pretty cool. Banana. Four bananas and pixelated. That's cool. Pixelation's a cool, cool effect. It's not too hard to do, but it's cool. And then they added like boundaries between them and tinted them and things like that. But not the banana, just the background. It's pretty cool. Demon Slayer. And then they added, they changed the dragon from blue to red, but it had the unfortunate side effect of like adding all these like little red blobs of noise down here, which just doesn't look good. Try to avoid that. Try to avoid having like this kind of stuff here can. Uh, Spider-Man, Rainbow Spider-Man, uh, Demon Slayer again. This one, I no, this one was the winner, I think. Okay, so 
first thing they did, that's just my vignette filter. That's not worth anything, but artistically, it makes it look a lot better. You see that? Like, it actually really adds a lot to the image by adding the vignette filter. So zero technical, but a lot of artistic. And then that is fantastic. I'll just, I'll stop with this one. And I was going to stop with the previous one, but I wanted to show you the winner. So um, that is just beautiful. Not too hard. Uh, they're just messing with the colors on the image, but the combination of the vignette and then the color swap. And then uh, they did another color thing here. Uh, just chef's kiss looks, looks amazing. Okay. What do you guys think? Got some inspiration for your Photoshop filters, image filters. You guys want to see how to do some of this stuff? All right, let's do it. So, so there's Kyoto. Okay. So again, leave main alone. If you want to look at main, you can, um, the only thing you should touch in main is just putting down your name and what your filter does, your partner's name, what, what their filter does. If you have a third person, that one. Uh, you don't need to modify main other than that. Um, I've written some functions that convert between a C image object and a vector of vector of vectors. And the reason why I do that is because that allows your code to not know anything about C image, so it doesn't need to include it, so it doesn't have a 30 second long compile time. Okay. So. Uh, here is main. So again, we got the argc, the argv, and that is a class. So there is a C image class, and the C image class uh, uses unsigned chars as its um, color data. So unsigned chars range from 0 to 255. That's why your colors range from 0 to 255. If I put double in there, they would range from 0 to 1. But they don't, because we're using unsigned chars. I grab the image in the width. You can actually pass in a second image if you want. And if you pass in a second image, then you can use that for like watermarking and things like that. But you don't need to worry about that by and large. Um, I then convert, uh, I make a vector, vector, vector events. Um, why is it not unsigned integers? In case you overflow, I handle that for you. Um, I then convert from the image to the vector and then uh, run the filter. And then I convert it back into the C image format and I save it to disk. So all that stuff, all of the loading of a JPEG file, saving a JPEG file, all of that's done for you. Like I said, you don't need to modify this at all. All you need to do is come into filter1.cc or if you're the second partner, filter2.cc. And then uh, this is in color rotate. Let me show you what color rotate looks like. So if we set the red channel to be the green channel and the green channel to be the blue channel and the blue channel to be the red channel, so what I've done here is I've grabbed the red, the green, and the blue value at the current pixels. So we're saying for every row, for every column, grab the red value, the green value, and the blue value out of it. And then we can just use R, G, and B until we need to set them again. So I'm going to set the red channel to be whatever the green value is. So, so the red becomes the green, the green becomes the blue, and the blue becomes the red. So this is going to rotate the three color channels, and it's going to create a pretty psychedelic effect. So again, we build it by typing make, and then we run it, and... Uh, run it with uh, Kyoto.jpg, and then we go into WinSCP. And uh, some students in the uh, other class were they kept opening up the original image, and they're like, "It's not changing." It's like, "Yeah, it doesn't change the original image. What it changes is this file right here, filter1.jpg and filter2.jpg." And so that is what it'll, the the mean streets of Gion District in Kyoto. They're not mean streets at all. It's actually kind of a Nice, nice area for kind of fancy and traditional. Um, you can see what it looks like if you um, rotate red becomes green and green becomes blue and blue becomes red. So the blue, see that? The blue sign becomes a green sign. All the reds in the wood become uh, blues and so on and so forth. So this is all kind of red stuff up here. So the red stuff becomes blue. Pretty cool stuff, very easy to write. Okay, also you don't get any credit if you do this because I've done it for you. <laughs> so 
So um, you have to uh, uh, not just copy my code. Now you can use my code as inspiration. That's fine. Um, it's fine if you use my code as inspiration. That's why I'm showing it to you, but you can't just like use it, you know? So blur uh, is another one. So this is gonna blur, uh, blur the middle um, third of the image. So if you wanna just selectively like zoom in on parts of the image to apply your filter to it. Uh, before I get into blur, let me show you like maybe grayscaling it. So if you wanna grayscale something, uh, you average the red, the green, and the blue together. So you do something like this. You say int average, actually it's right here actually. So that is the average of the red, the green, and the blue. And then you can simply set the red channel to be the average, the blue channel to be the average, and the green channel to be the average. So if you had 255, 255, 255, they'll be set to 255, 255, 255. It's white, it won't change. But if you have like 25500, then they would be set to 80 something, 80 something, 80 something, right? So it the average intensity is, and so it becomes grayscale. Does this, do you guys understand this? Like how that, do you understand how that turns it into like a black and white image? Anytime the red, the blue, and the green are the same, it's gonna be somewhere between black and white on that, on that scale. So let's say that the red is 100 and green is 20 and blue is zero. The average intensity of those three colors is 120 divided by three, which is 40. And so by setting it to 40, 40, 40, the brightness of that pixel doesn't change, but it loses any difference between the red, the green, and the blue. So the red, the green, and the blue are all set to be the same. Therefore, it becomes monochrome. Monochrome is when the red, the green, and the blue channels are all equal to each other. Okay. So if we do this, make, run, and this is the workflow again. It runs it, right click, open. You can see the middle third of it. So I'm starting at this third, this third, this third, this third, so it's like a ninth of the image. You can see the, the middle third column, middle third row is black and white, and then the outer part is still in color. And that's kind of cool, kind of, it's like a window into the past of, you know, the Gion district in Japan. What do you guys think, do you like it? Okay. If you don't like it, it's fine too. Um, oops. And there's the original. Okay. So, um, so this is grayscale here. So now let's talk about blurring. So, um, to blur something, we're only doing like a one pixel blur. And so you're probably not gonna be able to see this very well. But uh, what what we're doing is we, if we're at a current point, what we wanna do is we wanna take the average of its red value and the value of the person north of it, south of it, east of it, and west of it, okay? And that's what we have here. So we're grabbing the red value at our current point, row I, column J, the red value. We're adding that to the person above us Row minus one is the person above us, that's north of us. So we're grabbing their red value. We're grabbing the red value of the person south of us because that's the row below us. We're grabbing the um, red value of the person west of us, that's the column to the left. And we're grabbing the red value of the person east of us, j plus one. So we're adding together five values. And so to average five values together, you divide by five. And so this creates the average red value of all five pixels red values. Same for green, same for blue. And we set our red value equal to the average of the red values, okay? This is actually gonna cause smearing. This isn't the best algorithm, but who cares? It's just demo code. So if we run that, then if we run that, 
then looks pretty much the same, right? It's only one pixel blur. It's not a lot of blurring. But if you really zoom in, like the lantern back here, right? That's the new one. And here is the original one. You guys see that? Very, very slightly blurred. Yep. So if you want to do a better blur, you need to go out more pixels, right? Very soft blur. Uh, another thing you do is you could um, You do like a half tone. It's like a half tone is like um, uh, means every other pixel is black. Okay, and uh, this was commonly done uh, um, when like printing newspapers and comics and things like that because the ink would bleed out because you choose you use really cheap paper for these things. And so if you've ever seen like comics, they have like that comic look. Um, like that. You see how it's like made up of like these little dots and things like that. It's like the comic book look. I don't know what's going on with her face, but right. It's like a halftone screen. So we can do that by just setting every other pixel to be black. And so um, what we could do is we could say if the row uh, plus the column is odd, let's say, then uh, Make it black. Okay. So if the if the uh, row is zero and the column is zero, is it odd? Nope. It skips over it and it leaves the the original image untouched. But if the row is zero and the column is one, then it sets it to zero, 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 which is black. Okay. Red zero, green zero, blue zero is black. So the next pixel is black. Then the next one you add them together, you get an even. So it doesn't do anything. The next one is odd. It turns it black. And then when you go down a row. Column one, row uh, row one is even, so it leaves it. So it's going to create a checkerboard effect. So literally every other pixel is going to be set to black, but you're going to really have to zoom in to see it. Um, so this is a fairly high resolution image, and so you can see if we zoom all the way in here, that uh, every other pixel is black now. Right? Kind of cool, right? Creates like that screen door effect that you see a lot of in halftone prints and things like that. What do you guys think? You like it? Raphael, you like that one? Pretty cool. We can make the uh, squares bigger. Uh, so they're a little more visible. Uh, let's see. Uh, maybe we'll do every 20. So this is a way you can actually see algebra. It's really cool. So if you take a value and divide it by 20 and then add them together and see if the result is odd, um, this should give us blocks that are 20 big because we're dividing coordinate by 20. Uh, no, not G++. No. Ah, no, no, no. Uh, we're gonna have to rebuild the whole thing. Oh no, good, we didn't. All right, excellent. Uh, so run it and take a look. And now you can see we've got twenty pixel by twenty pixel checkerboard patterns. Pretty rad, I think. I don't know. 
you can fill in the remainder with like something. I don't know. You can probably put another image in if you wanted to. You have every other block of 20 pixels being one image or another image. Um, let's see. So you can say, instead of setting it to black, we could set it to like 255, 255, 255. So now every other block at 20 pixels will be white. Like that. <laughs> Quite different, isn't it? Like when it's all black, you can almost ignore them. But when it's white, it's like, like that. The Nazi in the uh, Indiana Jones when the uh, Ark of the Covenant's open and like your face melts off. It's like it's too much. <laughs> uh, maybe we'll set it to like one hundred. Maybe make a more neutral kind of gray color. Eh, still doesn't look good. I think black probably looks better. But you like mess with all that kind of stuff. Maybe set it a little bit smaller. Pretty cool. Okay, uh, what else we got here? Um, yeah, you're right. Okay, so let's, and you can combine these things together. Like you could do color rotation and half toning, you know, if you want. Um, I mean, that nobody's, nobody's gonna stop you, you know? Because ultimately what you have is you just have all of the pixel data in a, in a, in a vector and you can just modify those values however you want. You wanna add five to the red value at every spot? Like you can do that, you know? Like you wanna, you know? You want to rotate the colors, you can do that. So this is going to do a color rotation and the half tone together. Uh, nope, maybe not. Oh yeah, because I'm not using, I'm overriding these. All right. Uh, else. Nope. Yeah, there we go. So we got a half tone and a color rotation working harmoniously with each other. All right. Uh, what else can we show you? Um, grayscaling, blurring. Uh, this is brightening. So this is going to uh, double brightness of every pixel. So remember our for loop up top here is just saying for every row, for every column, at that point, we are going to take the red value and double it, take the green value and double it, take the blue value and double it. So if we just pull this out here, then we can composite that on top of the half tone, on top of the color rotation, and we'll end up with a much brighter rotated image, which kind of makes up for the um, darkening effect of the screen door effect, right? It actually looks like kind of like how it was originally because we've added brightness in to compensate for the uh, deleting half the pixels out of it. Not bad, not bad. All right, so what else we got here? Um, yeah, thank you. I think it looks nice. Um, we can add rainbow patterns onto it. Why not? So uh, we take the grayscale value and we're, we do some trig on top of it, if the red is over 150 and the green is below 150. So you can you can selectively select parts of your image to apply the filter to it. So here I'm only gonna touch, I'm only gonna touch pixels where the red value is over 150 and the green value is under 150. So like if you have a red sword or something like that, then the red sword would turn into a rainbow. Okay. I have no idea how this is gonna work. There you go. So it's tinting uh, the redder parts of the image with rainbows. 
kind of cool. What do you guys think? This part here looks kind of messy. I'd probably want to clean that up. I'd adjust. I would adjust those threshold levels. You sit there and you just play with it, run it over and over again until it kind of looks good, right? Can't wait for it to be winter. I know it's like ninety degrees today too. <laughs> no, I mean, it's not. What What's happening is that this isn't quite red enough, and so it's not triggering the rainbow effect on these because they're not quite red enough. So if I were to like drop the um, the threshold on it to like 120 maybe or maybe raise this threshold I don't know um, make the uh, rainbow filter a little bit more inclusive and you can open it up and now you can see it's hitting a lot more of those pixels right so but it's also picking up a lot of these here so yeah it, yeah that kind of looks horrible <laughs> yeah I mean it's not great but like you can see how you can like selectively choose parts of your image to apply the filter to you can um uh you know select areas where the colors are certain things you can select areas based on their row so i'm saying if the row i is the row right if the row value is over a third of the rows 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 is how many rows you have columns is how many columns you have uh, so if we are more than a third of the way down, if we're more than a third of the way down and we're less than two thirds of the way down, we're selecting the middle third of the image. And if we are over a third of the column to the right and less than two thirds of the column to the right, we're selecting the middle ninth of the image with this. Then we can selectively choose a region of the screen. Or you could just say something like if the, you know, I mean, you can do something really simple, like you can do, you can do something like this, where you say, like, you know, if the row is like over fifty and the row is under hundred, then vector dot at i dot at j dot at red is equal to two five five. So you just this will just add like a put it at the very bottom here. Uh, not row, i is the row. Nope, not you plus plus make. Oh, column, sorry. So we're picking uh, this column, and we just slapped 255 red over that entire column there. So from 50 to 100, it's all red now. And so you can see if you screw up like the, the row versus column difference, uh, you actually can see the, the change on here. You can actually see what you're doing. And that's kind of cool, All right? So when SCPing a JPEG, does it need to be in the public root file or just drop it in the image processing assignment? Uh, uh, I would put it into your image processing folder. Then you then you don't have to do anything weird to, to run it. Um, okay. Uh, let's get rid of this. Um, right, one last thing. I'm going to show you guys sepia toning. So sepia toning, uh, these are magic numbers. I don't know where they came from. Uh, so the red value at every pixel is set to the red value times this plus the green value times this plus the blue value times this. The green values, who knows what those mean. But the upshot, let me turn off the rainbow pattern because that's going to look really, really strange. So, sepia toning turns it kind of this brown color, right? So, um, there you go. Um, you can't steal my sepia code and use it and call it your own. Uh, I have vignette code too, that's in filter two dot cc. And so the vignette code, uh, you can use it, but like modify it if you want points. So, uh, some of the, some of the people had like an edge vignette where you just use the column that it was on to darken. That's different from this. So that's fine. 
Uh, but if you just copy and paste my code, it's not worth any technical points. Okay. So what the vignette code does is it figures out where the center point of the image is, rows divided by two, columns divided by two is the center point. And then it figures out how far away the current pixel is from the center point. So if we're directly on the center point, then what happens? Our distance is zero. So we get two minus zero is two. So our brightness gets doubled. So in the center part of the vignette, it gets doubled. And then if we're all the way out at the corners, uh, then distance divided by diagonal length. Diagonal length is the distance to the corner, basically. Um, this turns into one. So we get two minus two is zero. Our brightness gets multiplied. It, we multiply zero times our, our pixel values. It turns into black. And so what the vignette does is the corners turn pitch black and the center gets doubled in brightness. And so that's a vignette effect. A vignette effect is used for like portraits and things like that. So you can see the center is now nice and bright. Corners are nice and dark. Okay. And the code for that is about three lines of code. So what all we need to do is just uh, figure out how far the center is away from the corner. And that's using Pythagoras, Pythagorean theorem. Uh, and then how far away our point is from the center. And then do a little bit of algebra. There you go. If you were to up this to like three and three, then the center of the image would be three times brighter and the corners would still be black. If you did something like two and one, the center would be twice as bright, but the corners would be normal intensity. If you did something like this, then the center is normal intensity and the corners are black. So compile, make, run, and so you just mess with these things. And, and do you see this workflow? You just edit the code, compile it, run it, open up in one SCP, and you can see the center now is, is the same brightness, but it's just like you're looking at the world through like a periscope or something like that. So you just play with you just play with those numbers and mess with them and uh, you get all sorts of like just cool effects. You know, it's a it's a very visual assignment. And so you just sit there and just be like, there's no there's no bugs. There's only happy little accidents, right? It's the Bob Ross method of, of programming filters. Any idea what this error is when I try to apply a filter to J test JPEG I uploaded? You could not open the file. So uh, you're trying to open a file called public dead city. There is no file called public dead city. Okay. If I were to CD into the public directory and LS, there is nothing here called dead city. Okay. You can't open it. Um, if you were talking about your directory, it's right here. So you just run it like this. You'd say a dot out dead city, just like that. No public. Okay. And that is how you'd run it. And then if you want to look at your output, you're going to copy that file using WinSCP over your machine and take a look at it. Okay. So that is basically my lecture for today. You guys have any burning questions about things you'd like to see. Now remember, if I do it for you, you can't do it yourself. So you want to see anything? Turn sepia back off. Now, like, let's say that you wanted to do something like sepia, but not sepia. You can sit here and just start changing these numbers randomly and just see what kind of like cool filters you get. And if you do that, that's fine. That counts. Okay. Just, you know, you, you got to do more than like, oh, 128. I'm going to change that to 129. Eh, eh, eh. No, low, te low technical difficulty. You guys are graded on the ice skating scale. 10 points for technical merit, 10 points for artistic difficulty. So the more code you write, the more technical difficulty you get, probably, unless it looks terrible. They have to build on top of each other. So you have to work with your partner. So you notice that like the vignette built on top of the sepia, right? So the sepia toning is here in filter one, right? So if I were to right click and open up filter one, you get the sepia tone. And then filter two takes the input from filter one. So filter two did this strong vignette effect. And so the, the, the filters have to stack on top of each other. So it's also important that you pick a starting image, pick a starting image that is going to work well with your filters. All 
all three parts have to be like a harmonious whole. Okay. So like if I was doing this vignette thing and like the image had something off in the corner over here, uh, this would be a terrible filter for it because it'd be highlighting the wrong part of the screen. Right. So you have to like really think about your image, your filter, talk about it with your, with your buddies, your partners. Uh, you basically are going to have an hour, um, to, to work on this in lab time. I'm going to be here. Uh, if you have any questions about how to do anything in particular, let me know. And, uh, I think, uh, that's about it. Maybe I'll show you guys like columns or something. Like if you wanted to, no, I already showed that to you. Yeah. You can select a, you can select a column and turn it red. Yeah. I think that's basically everything I wanted to cover. Um, if you want to do this at home, you have to, again, download the C image, uh, C image library yourself and the starting code, um, I can put up on GitHub and I'll post a link on the YouTube link so that you can, uh, clone it if you want to work on it at home because it'll be a lot faster uh, doing this on your home machine than on the server. The server can get fairly bogged down. All right, that's it for today. It is now lab time. I'm going to hang out. Uh, I'm going to stop the stream, but uh, I'll be here for the next hour and then uh, answer any questions you guys have. So make sure you talk. Make sure you get a good theme. Make a good theme. Work on that aesthetic. Half your points are aesthetic points. Right, and there is extra credit available. The best image filters get extra credit. And like I said, we're gonna have a team of judges uh, next Wednesday. We're gonna evaluate your thing. We all vote on you know seven points aesthetic, nine points difficulty, whatever. Average score of the judges is your grade. I mean, I make the final decision, but you know, I listen to the the judges. Okay, cool. Have fun. <laughs>